So say Stan Lee started saying certain sounds should stick together with similar sounding sounds starting with the same letter to seem somewhat soothing to see on specific comics. To sync with your synapses. Alright, this alliteration is already amazingly annoying. Let's learn this lovely little lesson. Welcome to Alter Ego. I'm not Scott. I'm DK. I know. I'm disappointed too. Anyway, have you ever noticed the stunning amount of alliteration in comics? It's weird, right? Scott Summers, Pepper Potts, Miles Morales, J. Jonah Jameson Sr., Jr., and the third. And that's just to name a few. The number of alliterative names in comics is ridiculous. Now, you may notice that all those examples are Marvel, when there are also plenty in the DC Universe, like Lois Lane, Lex Luthor, and a bunch of other L's for whatever reason. But the reason we're focusing on Marvel is because Stan Lee, the godfather of comics himself, is renowned for doing this with his character names. And it's the same science behind both anyway. There are a few reasons why Stan Lee started giving his characters repeating initials. He gives one explanation in an interview in the book Stan Lee Conversations, saying that he made all his characters alliterative because they sounded more fun. And that's what he wanted to have. Yep. Honestly, it seems like kind of a cop-out, but when we look closely, Stan's fun is just a simple way of looking at the neuroscience behind why we like such soothing sounds strung together so streamlined, even if he didn't know about the science when he created the characters. Alliteration, that is the repetition of initial sounds in a string of words, introduces a rhythm to names and phrases. And our brains love to recognize these patterns. Alliteration in literature, much like symmetry in art, triggers a positive response in the parts of our brains that reward us for recognizing patterns. So let's break that down a little bit. The rhythm forms something almost like a tune, and our brain notices it and follows along, working to the tune in unison like brooms sweeping to the music in Fantasia. It's likely also why we dance. Our minds hear a pattern, sync up with it, and we try to express the pattern with our bodies. A study which is linked below shows that most sensory inputs will activate this brain function, as they said in the article, like a baseball bat cracking, or as I'd like to put it, like Peter Parker flipping his webs. This activates the part of our brains which is responsible for visual information. This means that when our brains find that rhythm in Bruce Banner or see the Scarlet Speedster, it leads us to a positive association, thus giving us more enjoyment. Kind of along the same lines as whenever we see the word pow with a punch, we perceive the hit as being more powerful, despite it being a static image on the page. So when we see or hear alliteration, it's not much, but it does evoke enough brain activity to make the names stick, causing us to latch onto characters and eventually grow to care about their fates. This works for villains too in a pretty fun way, so when we see a name like, I don't know, Doctor Doom, our minds register those alliterative Ds, and it engages us, and if we're supposed to hate him, it makes us hate him more, essentially amplifying his purpose. But back to Stanley, aside from the sheer enjoyment of it all, there is another reason why he decided to give everyone identical initials. You see, back in the day, Stan was essentially the only person actually writing Marvel comics. He and the creative folks at the company would use what would be known as the Marvel method of writing comics. Stan would come up with a basic plot for a story, hand it off to the writers to draw it however they saw fit, and then Stan would go in and add dialogue to finish the comic. The reason they did this was because Stan was stretched way too thin since he was writing literally everything. And since Stan had to write an insane amount of characters, he had to come up with some way to easily remember them. This is why Marvel has a bunch of alliterative names, simply because Stan needed help recalling all of the characters he was writing. But how does alliteration help memory? One 2004 study on childhood development showed that alliteration had a positive effect on children learning new material. That rhythmic sound of alliteration made the kids retain that information better. So when you flip open a comic and you meet Rocket Raccoon or encounter a new name, odds are that the mind will create a mnemonic device allowing you to store the info and associate it with this new character and make him more likable. Or less likable, if that's his thing. However, this would sometimes backfire on Stan. Sometimes just because you know a character's initials doesn't mean you remember his name. Which is why he made the mistake of calling Peter Parker Peter Palmer in Amazing Spider-Man number one just a few months after the character had actually debuted. Or when a similar thing happened with the Hulk's alter ego accidentally being written as Bob Banner instead of Bruce Banner. They even retconned that last one, making the character's full name Robert Bruce Banner, but that is a fascinating story for another episode of Alter Ego. So there we have it. Stan Lee wanted us to have more fun and make the character names easy to remember. And so do our brains. And hey, special thanks to Powers Comics in Green Bay, Wisconsin for letting us use their store as a set, because I don't have one. Powers Comics has the largest selection of comic books in Wisconsin, so if you are in the area at all, you need to check them out. So who is your favorite alliteratively named character? Mine is probably Matt Murdock, or Daredevil. He's just got all kinds of alliteration going on, doesn't he? Let me know what yours is down in the comments, and if you like this video and want more about the names in comics, you can click this link here to check out a playlist of this show, Alter Ego. I highly recommend it. Maybe I'm just partial because I'm on it, but you know, whatever. Also, if you want to check out some more about Stan Lee, we have a playlist on the living legend himself right over here. And hey, don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the videos that we have coming your way every week that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. Once again, I'm DK. Thanks for watching.